So, um, who is tickling who? I mean, that's a question that Marx and Engels both tried to tackle. And they found it was the bourgeoisie. I know. It, what's funny is, like, I didn't want to respond because I wanted to figure out who Marx and Engels were. And it, it, after the answer, I realized you were talking about Karl Marx. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not and, the Marx brothers. Yeah. yeah. And Diamond Engels. Oh, oh, no. I was thinking Laura Engels Wilder. Mm. Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. Yeah. But not Karl Marx. So you were thinking Karl Marx, the singer, and Laura Ingalls Wilder from Little House on the Prairie, no, no, that no, they I, had written a book together? No, I was thinking Harpo Marx. Harpo Marx, okay. And Laura Ingalls Wilder. Because I was thinking Karl Marx, character. Uh, of like the singer Karl Marx. There is no singer. Richard Marx. Was it Richard Marx? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting closer. Yeah. I know there's no Karl Marx, the singer. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think you were confusing the joke that was in The Big Lebowski. Richard Marx. Uh, uh, it's like Lennon said, you look for the guy who... I am the walrus. No, but there was a singer, Richard Marx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, wasn't he on... Uh, no, he, he was not on Curb Your Enthusiasm, was he? He might have been. One of them was on a, like a, a soap at the same time. Like he was, a, he was a singer and he was on a soap opera. But I forget who that was. Okay. Can, I remember reading an... A review of of it i think in college because they played the new york state fair which happens in syracuse there's a lot of butter sculptures have you ever seen a, a butter sculpture that was, just made you go damn was was richard marks jesse's girl rick springfield that's that's it. who i'm thinking of yeah. that's jesse's girl yeah, yeah. rick springfield okay. Right, there we, we go. This. All right. Let's go back to the important thing. Have you ever seen a butter sculpture that just made you went, damn? Uh, no. <laughs> Never? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at most, I was, I'd was be all like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, all right. that's the highest rating. On the Brian rating of butter sculptures, the highest possible rating is, what? <laughs> okay, uh, back and forth, reactions to butter sculptures. Okay, uh, uh, I'll go next, because you went, you went, all right? Okay. Huh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like, are we going down or up? Whatever, wherever you want. Okay. We're just just, just slightly, reactions you've had to butter sculptures. Is, yeah. Okay, you see a butter uh -huh. butter sculpture sculpture, uh -huh. and you're like, um, ah. So wait, that's sideways or down from what? Uh, well, what? Because it seems like that's more of a reaction than what? What would be uh, uh, like a very artistic butter sculpture? Whereas, so you're gonna the shocked. long one is like I'm judging. Like, like, like what is like? I can't believe this is a butter sculpture. It, it would be like um, a Pentium two as a butter sculpture. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be like, what? All right, here's mine. Huh. Okay, what about this one? You walk around the corner. Uh-huh. I'm going to give you my reaction. You tell me how... You tell me uh, what, what, what the butter sculpture is? Exactly. All right, yes. perfect. Okay, yeah, go good. ahead. Yeah. Hey, we're walking around the corner. Mm -hmm. mm. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right that one what is, is this butter sculpture that one is. how big is it <laughs> okay <laughs> what is it? this is easy <laughs> this is a fucking slam dunk watch this all right so uh, uh you walk around the corner and you begin to see a, a man in a business suit and he's reading the newspaper yes but the further you walk the more you see that there is a room-sized Optimus Prime, so it's like a transformer, uh, uh, but the front of the car of the transformer is a regular man reading the newspaper. Okay, I like this impulse. Yeah, and I do want to make your vision happen. However, no, I'm describing what you would say making that noise. No, like, no, no, have you ever no, made no, that no. noise looking at a butter sculpture in real life? Would you like to hear the noise I would actually make if I saw that? Okay, yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Beep, boop, 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 boop. 
Megatron, <laughs> have you seen this? You know what? I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I was wrong. We got it wrong here. Uh, 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 when's the last time you went to the Texas State Fair? Uh, I believe once, and it was to... Wait, Texas State Fair? Yeah, in, in, in Dallas. Maybe never. Maybe never. You never saw Big Tex? No, I don't, I don't know what words you're saying. This the, is the big guy who's it's a gigantic, it's a massive fucking I guess you can say animatronic. A, a, he he lit on fire. Kai, it's right there. Kaiju? It's right there. Oh, no, I've never seen that. You ain't never seen that? Oh. Why why is he on fire, my bro? Well, cuz he lit on fire once and they had to rebuild him. <laughs> why when did he light on fire? Like I would that? say probably <laughs> 6 to 7 years ago, maybe even more than that. My audio listeners, just picture a giant robot There's, Texan on fire. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> they lit what? this motherfucker on fire. <laughs> he turns he went full ghost rider. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I we we talked about a game. Okay, can we talk about the fucking? I know. Okay, go, I know. I know. Go, I know. Go. I know. I know. You want to fucking go to the next sparkly thing? The uh, uh, we should fucking go to the Texas State Fair. Three and a half hours. I mean, that's the reason why not. Obviously, right. yeah. But maybe what we if, could do a if, thing. Maybe we, we could do a thing in in Dallas for them to come here. No, they won't do that. Why not? But we can get because they're fair food. What kind of like like they got all sorts of like Texas State Fair tries to compete internationally on fucked up fair food. So it's like you're gonna get like a deep fried pork chop inside of an Oreo and some oh, shit okay, like that. Okay, okay, like okay, like right, there's right. some fucked up shit there. Think about a haunted house. You know how like you're not actually on a space station, you're not actually in yeah. Silent Hill or whatever, but you're simulating those things. Yes. Should we create a Texas State Fair simulator? Yeah. Just for us and our own here. I mean, are you ready to compete at the level that the Texas State Fair does? Because I feel like for somebody who just found out about Big Tex right now, you're not ready to compete at that level. That's a very high level. I'm not competing because the assumption is you, you've never actually been there. You're at the simulator. Just like I ain't never been to a space station. I ain't never been to Silent Hill. You don't think so? Wait, so you think that you are the normal one? Me, the guy who moved here two years ago, I've been to a Texas State Fair. You're assuming that you are that that the Texas State Fair for people in Austin uh, are uh, is something that people have never been to. I think we should also simulate the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's also just here. I know, I know, but it's way. On the other side of town. I don't even think I'm it just, is. Just, I think I'm it's just, on this side of town. Uh, nobody knows. It's mysterious. I think, it's, just, uh, I think it's 15 we, minutes from here. We should also simulate maybe the torches down the road. <laughs> we can build. We can get the bar done. Yeah, I know. That's what makes We can so get cast. the bar done. That's we can for get sure. the actual people. Yeah. Uh, no, we should go, dude. The, uh, do you have a favorite fair kind of food, like some deep fried crazy shit? Like uh, they have like just like deep fried sticks of butter. Like that is like a thing that happens at the at at, at the various different state fairs. That's usually maybe kettle corn. That's one I'd go for. Go go for. Yeah, but anyway, I, special. I almost said go through. <laughs> I mean, like that's which you would go through because that's like your base level. Yeah. All right. So if you're and this is the thing that they compete have seen, with have nationally. Seen, have you seen the little girl with the popcorn crotch? Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't. Don't. Listeners, I tried to keep this on, on rails. And this is the first time this that, is, he's, on theme. that he's succeeded in derailing it. This is on theme. Deep fried Snickers, one of them. Please describe what you're looking at right there. That is a little girl, and it says, I was like, what happened to her legs? Then I realized it's a damn bag of popcorn. And so you zoom in, and you realize that what looks like a girl with these crazy little legs, these spindly legs, is, is actually a bag of popcorn that is blended in 
to the, uh, the, the, uh, the yellowed dried out grass. dried yeah. grass behind yeah. her. And so at, at a pixelated level, immediately through magic eye technology, it looks like she's got tiny little legs. Yep. All right. Now we're on the same page. We did it. We did. We did. Uh, so deep fry what? In fact, Bryce, can you bring up, because this is a thing that they publish every year, just bring up on screen the the food that is at the Texas State Fair this year, because that is that is a big deal. I feel like the baseline is a turkey leg. You can I mean, only go up you or are, down from you there. Are, you are talking about, like... Next level. No, no, you, you are talking about the base level of this shit. So it's like, yes, turkey legs, kettle corn. Like these are all things that are the are, are, are the beginning ingredients of the kind of concoctions that they put together at this fair every year. Should should I admit that I'm salivating as we talk about this? I'm fucking blown away that you've never been to the Texas State Fair. Uh, I, 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 I've been to a fair number of uh, Renaissance fairs and uh, 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 several cosplay conventions, uh, uh, several anime cons these are are more agricultural like like that was the basis of it is that they have like they have their cow awards they have their i've worked some of these okay state fairs county fairs who's to say, who's to say? Who's to say? but um the uh uh are you guys gonna say I, the new I, foods I, I, for 2022? 2022 yes we would what do you think the dough muff the is the what Dough muff. Dough muff. Arigato? Uh, I, I would say that it is some kind of donut muffin. Right. A yeast donut battered in banana nut muffin batter and deep fried. It's a donut and a muffin. Damn. And see, so th this was all last year's shit, so we don't even no, know I, what I, this year's shit see, is. See, I would, I would, what's the one where they put a turkey in a... In or duck in a duffin turducken yeah 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 it's a turkey a duck tur chicken and a chicken yeah yeah that's it <laughs> that's it it put a duck and a chicken and a chicken in a turkey that's it how about the deep fried country cookout this hearty dish uh has got pulled pork herbed goat cheese special sauce uh and then it's uh deep fried uh, no, sorry, but coleslaw <laughs> and potato salad, and then it's deep fried. Mm. Yay! See, that's the thing is you're you're a bit of a picky eater. No, no, no. So you wouldn't you wouldn't like a bunch of random shit oh, thrown I'll, together I'll, and deep fried. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll eat anything as long as it's not deep fried. You don't like deep fried food. Oh no, no. Name one thing I like. Uh, mozzarella sticks. Not deep fried, are they? Wait, they are. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> That'd be an amazing episode of Sherlock. <laughs> it's like, uh, but what about the bumper sticker, Sherlock? It's not on a car, is it? Stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, uh, three. And I mean, what do you think? What do you think the the reaction to the we girls can't. would be if you were like, "Hey, we're good, just gonna do nothing but walk around in the hot ass sun and eat a bunch of random, ridiculous food?" I mean, uh, it's probably a lot like the uh, local Dripping Springs Founders Festival that they do, uh, which is really exciting for about an hour and a half, and then they want to leave immediately. Yep. Only this time, it's a three and a half hour drive instead of a 45 minute drive. There we go. Now yeah. we're on the same page. Yeah. Now we're on the same page. Do you want to do a haunted house? Uh, you know they have a Last of Us haunted, haunted, <laughs> haunted house at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. You know it's July. Yeah, that's why we have to start planning now. Oh, you want to make a haunted house? No, I want to go to... You want to go to Halloween Horror Nights? Yeah, because it's at the same time as Food and Wine Festival. Also, did you know that Disney attendance is at an all-time low. Not during food and wine. Uh, right. Uh, the last multiple years, this July 4th is the lowest attendance they've had for all four parks. Oh, July 4th. Yeah. Not during 
Halloween Horror Nights. No, because that's yes. in the future. We don't know yet. Yes, but we were also, talking about that. Part. We were in. Yeah. We were I, in I, a conversation I, I said, about that. Halloween Horror Nights. And then and you. And, and then wine. you said. Oh, wait, I, I know that you turned the page my, to current moment, but I did my not point, know. My point being, uh, if we're gonna do Big Diz again, might be a pretty good time. Right now. No. Uh, in during July Fourth. Yeah. No. Uh, that that's in the past. Uh, two months from now. Uh, trend. So not during the least traffic time. The least traffic time is right now. Uh, the least traffic time is this year. So it's like every year it's gone down, and we are at the lowest year possibly ever. So the odds are, like, if if, if you're gambling, uh, next year they're gonna have discounts, and there's gonna be a lot of people. If what you want is very few people and very low ride times, this might be the year. Okay. Not to be all like Dave's not here, man, but like are we talking about now or are we talking about in the future? Well, I'm talking about the only time that matters, which is the time that both Halloween Horror Nights is running and okay. Food and Wine Festival. I, that's where I Epcot. thought we were, and yes. then you said that no, you were talking about now. I am talking about this year. This year now has, means year, not now means now. This minute, no, because gotcha. we have to do okay. a show. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now means this year, and it is the lowest attended year, and they have not yet corrected for it because you know what they're going to do next is they're going to slash the prices. Price. Yeah, exactly. Blah, 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 exactly. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm asking, like, in this moment, do we want to make a call two months from now and go do Big Diz too? Well, I mean. <laughs> We're only live on the internet, Justin. What could the problem possibly be? You know what the fucked up thing is? The fucked up thing is, is that we literally had a conversation before the show. Yeah. Where we were like, oh, we just did a, a really, really positive live show. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, what are we going to say about future things? So whenever you do a really good event, yeah. the only question is, when are we going to do the next the next event? event. Yeah. What are we going to say about it? And we came up with nothing. Right. Well, I, until it, right now. And the reason why I brought it up before the show is because I wanted to avoid moments like this. I mean, I I was talking about a totally separate activity, <laughs> but now that you put it that way, it does make sense that maybe I was accidentally ambushing you with an <laughs> on the moment live on the air proposal that we do a big Diz to complete with a live show well, because at Epcot. Do you, and think, go to do you think that we would promote us all going to the theme park together and not do a live show? Uh, uh, who's to say? Because if it were just me and you doing it, and we were talking off the air, yeah, then it would just be kind of like a joint family vacation kind of thing, and we would have a good time. If we were looking to do big, big Diz, then we would need to promote it. We need to let everybody know that they should take off time from work. They should fucking plan uh, uh, flights. They should do. They should get hotels. We should tell them what hotel that we're staying at, so it can be a bit of a convention thing. And while we're all there, it would be silly not to do a live show. Uh, uh, but now we're in the middle where you're like, "Hey, let me casually plan <laughs> a, a a family vacation s kind of thing," but also let's promote it as if it is a fan of it. That's one way to put it. Uh, or I was just floating some ideas out there to see <laughs> if there was interest. Uh, I, I don't know. If there's interest. Yeah. If there's interest. If there's interest. If there's interest. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you think that the problem is? The problem is lack of interest? Well, I, I would know. It, it would just, uh, audience, what do you think? A fucking struggle session. <laughs> yes, Mao is the great leader. <laughs> I, I submit to the fucking wisdom of the student revolution. Uh, uh, no, I would love to. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm always looking for reasons to get back to Orlando. So, uh, yes, book your tickets, everybody. No, book okay. your flights. Book your flights right now. I, I know it looks like we have the capability to plan this level of. Kayfabe, but 
No, nope. I was just Brian talking. gave up the kayfabe. God damn it. We oh, have God. we have the event. Killing it's me. already planned. Killing Not next me. year. Not next year. This year. But next year they're gonna. Uh, there's gonna exactly. Be people. I know. Brian and I have been planning this one for a no, year and a half. Don't, 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 we don't, knew don't. that it was gonna be more special if it happened only <laughs> two months out. So that's why we brought it up right that's now. The I was Brian couldn't. It up Brian right now. couldn't. Oh he gosh. couldn't wait. He, we I, were gonna I, do a big rollout, but Brian. That's he's why I was asking, like, I'm just asking questions. Uh -huh, yeah, I'm, I'm the Glenn Beck of this podcast. Yep. I'm yep. just asking questions. Book your flights. Take your vacation days right now. This is definitely happening. It'd be awesome. You kidding me? It'd be fucking dope. It'd be it'd be it'd be great. I mean, it'd be great for a reason to do it too. You know, to go out and like have like an oh, event. Uh, oh, yeah, got it. Yeah. To, to to have like a a target for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, like, because Ashley and I have kind of wound up going to Disney once a year just because we go to Orlando once a year uh, to visit family. So, like, you know, if I could see family either twice in a year that'd be really nice or if i could see you know go and see family then and and you know spend maybe a little bit longer there maybe spend a week yeah that'd be really really cool it'd be fun bryce in the chat says uh september 33rd yep that's the day book your flights no i'm down book for your that. flights uh okay how much of uh the other discussion do we want to save for the show about I mean, we have 30 minutes here Again, you're the one who runs all of it. I, I, okay. Like, you keep wanting me to make a decision about a thing in which you are going to get a disproportionate amount. And also, I have stronger feelings with more pointed words than you do. So, like, I feel very uncomfortable leading this because if I lead this, then you're... Reputation yeah. is tied to my acerbic wit, and there might be a point in which you're like, "Hey, uh, I thought it was fucked up. I thought we were ag in agreement, but then you said I never agreed to for you to this, say this Bleh. is this is me seeking second key permission. Also, Brett, maybe you could be the tiebreaker here, uh, <laughs> uh, because I'm afraid. Like, 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 once we start the big show, we know that we only have about five minutes per A block segment, right? Uh, but I do think it's a really interesting question of, uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you won't even mention it, then I'm not saying shit. I'm Building not, seven. I, I, I am not. Yeah. At, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I am not. I am not pushing this at all if you are not going to at least mention it. We could mention it. Uh, today was a weird day because we, uh, b both of us were forwarded. Uh, Brett, did did you did anybody forward you the New York Times article about Yuri Geller? No, but you told me a little bit about it, and right. I immediately reacted. <laughs> so both Justin and I got forwarded this article, and both of us kind of half read it and rolled our eyes and be like. Well, this is classic Yuri Geller fluff or whatever. Uh, Actually, Bryce, bring that headline back up. The end of the magic world's 50-year grudge. In 1973, Yuri Geller claimed to bend metal with his mind on live television. Skeptics couldn't beat him. Now they've joined him. Okay, now you're getting me mad all over again. because That, 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 is, that is the headline and subheadline of The Old Gray Lady, The Paper of Record. The New York Times. So I did not think anything of this and only half read it. And then we were talking with our friend Matt Donnelly, who was like, what do you think about all this? And suddenly it became a fucking therapy session. And I got very angry, but not as angry as Justin. I was angry at, 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 at the situation. Justin was angry at the journalistic integrity of the Wall uh, or sorry, the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we both agreed on one thing. It is this article is 100% definitely a point by point response to our particular podcast. And I, I was like medium angry when we were talking about it or medium upset, we'll say. And then we were headed out. And then I went back. I was like, didn't 
the New York Times have some other headline that was like our things? And it was about uh, Theranos, and it was like, cons don't fool us because we're stupid. It they fool us because we're human, or scam. No, yeah, yeah, yeah no scam. Human. Scam victims don't fall for it because they're stupid. They fall for it because they're human. And you're and like, I, hey. And then I realized that I think the New which, York by Times, the way, that's yeah, that's our for those of you just uh, tuning in. Our that's our line. that's our tagline on uh, on. It's cons don't fool us because you're stupid. Cons fool us because we're human. So, so we have one, if we're being generous, uh, 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 inspired headline by our tagline. And then we have an entire article that appears to point by point refute season three of World's Greatest Con. And uh, I... Specifically Yuri Geller's role in it. Mm-hmm. And specifically his feud with James Randi. Yes. Uh, I thought the article was... Horseshit. Sorry. That was the <laughs> that was a backfiring car. No, no. Sorry. Uh, what yeah, you saw sorry. was Brian... my prediction that has been in plain view the entire Brian time. Brian didn't and now, say that. And now you've I seen said it. That. Um, I, can, uh, I wish I knew Hebrew. Wait. Because I would like to know the Hebrew term for jock sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> for the guy who wrote that article, the guy that wrote that article. You know what? Actually, no, I'll tell no, you what. Let's, let's I'll tell you what. This motherfucker is. We may not even do the show tonight. We may not even do the fucking show tonight. Oh no! All of tonight might be right here in the green room. <laughs> oh no! Because motherfucking the New York Times fucking gave a spotlight to Yuri Geller, where uh, uh, whatever the snow job of a report, uh, air quotes reporter is. Uh, 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 we. Where we went out of our way in season three of World's Greatest Con to be very kind, very generous, and steel man every argument on all sides. And this article did none of it. And I am very upset. And I defy, I hereby challenge everybody to listen to that season and then read this article and do one of two things. Either write me personally, Brian at Shua.com, B-R-I-A-N at S-H-W-O-O-D.com and explain to me why this is a legitimate article or write, tweet, shout out, text, open your window and yell out at the New York Times for what appears to my eyes to be the sloppiest laziest, shittiest, most assumingest, unfairest piece of garbage fucking magic related content that for the second time appears to be ripped off from our podcast. I defy you to listen to our podcast and not say that's two strikes, New York Times, and that's one strike, Yuri Geller. I don't believe you have psychic powers. I thought that was Whoops. settled science. Well, neither does he, and that's why, uh, uh, because he lost, he's a loser. He's <laughs> a a absolute scalded dog who the public perception of him turned so violently because James Randi won the court of public opinion that he has to launder garbage through the New York Times to get people away from what he had previously spent decades of his life building, that he was a genuine psychic. This shit and is so, now, so bad. And so now he has to uh, uh, launder this idea that, oh, no, his all of his skeptics and all of magic has come to his side mm-hmm. because that means he's a magician. Right. Which is his, you know, I'll tell you, I, it's sweet. It's sweet that... Yuri Geller uh, gave all this water for this journalist to carry, which is, I'm sure, why his forearms are so fucking muscular. Yeah. That uh, uh, it's really a love letter to James Randi that he wants that he to gave prove James Randi that he the- wants to prove that James Randi was so right about him to say what James Randi had always told him, which is that you're a magician. Don't lie about it. Don't exploit people. And don't take their money from them right. with the idea of a thing that you know is not true. And so now he's trying to launder that. Uh, uh, and, and the New York Times should be shamed that they let that happen. And this author uh, uh, should truly, truly uh, feel terrible about himself. Headline, the end of the magic world's 50-year grudge. Subhead, 
In 1973, Yuri Geller claimed to bend metal with his mind on television. Skeptics couldn't beat him. Now they've joined him. It's the paper bait. of record. It's it, but they're making it clickbait, right? Yep, the old gray lady. Yeah, here, here that's for the just clickbait. it's clickbait. Well, I mean, like, like to magic. The magic's, the magic's the only people that care. Like that is supposed to be a salacious headline. Right. The the the, the difference in what the Times, I think, you know, should theoretically uh, uh, have some kind of control over is uh, running things that are factually incorrect. Right. <laughs> because uh, uh, there are many, many, many famous people for whom are in the skeptic movement uh, that would highly disagree with that. Right. And also would highly disagree with the fact that the skeptics couldn't beat him because like they if, did. Because by the way, if he was right the entire time, then the article would be 50 years of Yuri Geller being a psychic. Right. That would be the article, but it's not that now, is it? Yeah. Is it Yuri? Per is it? It's not that. It's you saying that you're a magician. Oh, well, that must mean you fucked up. Let's stick to the facts. These documented facts, including, per this article, a handsome 26-year-old Israeli dressed casually and flanked by a pair of academics, Mr. Geller performed a series of bewildering feats using nothing more, he said, than his mind. By the way, the clip in World's Greatest Con where he's saying, like, it's moving now, it's moving. I believe it's from that that is uh, correct. That, that event. So they are citing, they cite in the article two different times that he was on television, both of which are in uh, episode one of season three of per World's Greatest the Con. factual record, by the time the applause of the studio audience had died down, Geller mania had begun. That's actually true. I mean, he was very popular. Uh, quote, I have never seen a magic show, Mr. Geller now a lean and tireless 76-year-old oh, said geez. during a recent interview. <laughs> you want me to keep going? I, I wonder. I, I, I can't uh, stop. I don't point. know. I don't know how you can type when your nose is up another man's asshole. <laughs> like it's it not would easy. just be hard to it'd be look it'd be, <laughs> it'd be hard to type on the keyboard. Price goes, all right, it's like this. What yeah. you have to do. It's just, it's hard to see, is the thing. It is yeah, hard to true. see. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of touch typing. It would be <laughs> like, it'd be like remote viewing. You better know your home keys. That's right. Uh oh, Bryce knows the home keys. I got a Mavis beacon for you right here. <laughs> Mr. Geller endured and his cultural impact improved, both, uh, uh, or proved both singular and lasting. Ikea produced a Geller-inspired stool, which had bent wavy legs. Nintendo made a spoon-wielding Pokemon character. Which he sued them over, and they had to take out of the game for a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> References to Mr. Geller or mangled silverware have appeared by songs in R.E.M., Toad the Wet Sprocket, Ooh. and Incubus, and even made a memorable cameo in The Matrix. I don't even think this is quoted correctly. It's not the spoon that bends. A bald tyke in a robe tells Neo. Wow. A bald tyke, tyke yeah, in, a in a robe tells Neo. Uh, <sighs> it is only yourself. Uh... Mm. They should have just used our quote from World's Greatest Con. Because we were more generous. The more you read this shit, every quote from Geller appears to my eyes, in my opinion, to be him advising people to carry Gucci handbags and wear Armani suits. What? Uh, it's Mr. Gucci suit. <laughs> Gucci suit. <laughs> and my Armani... Bowtie. Mr. Yep. Geller is a vegan who doesn't drink or smoke, and he's always either moving or talking. No. Usually both. I mean, right. he's Israeli. Really? Like that happens a lot with them. <laughs> like they're very, they're very animated people. <laughs> Are we supposed to believe he doesn't sleep now? Yeah. You spend a third of your life sleeping. When young magicians come and ask for advice, he suggests what amounts to a makeover. I tell them. Wear Armani t-shirts, buy Hermes aftershave, fix your teeth, smile a lot, be nice to people. This is the way to become famous and loved by your audience. Mm. That's actually not terrible advice. 
I mean, like, like, look, the, the, the fact that this is a puff piece is what it is. Uh, I think that it's humiliating for this author. Uh, this author should, should truly understand that this is the kind of stuff that puts you in a different class of reporter. Like, you are just going to be somebody that cozies up to celebrities. Uh, and the greatest quote that I can think of that you wrote in this article, in this blowjob of an article, is... <laughs> Yoko Ono. Wait, no, hold on. My second one. Uh, Yoko Ono. Amazing that, that woman. Second he one. said, pausing by one of the dozens of photographs. She always wears Porsche glasses. Oh, my God. All right, here's, here's, here's the other thing. Uh, uh, keep swiping I, until you see James Randi's photo. Uh, because okay. that's how far, like, because theoretically, if you look at that quote, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Magic's 50-year grudge. Mm -hmm. Skeptics couldn't beat him, now they join him. The immediate thing that you would think of, because they are the Batman and the Joker, you decide which is which in your own personal fucking fantasy world, but, like, is Geller and, and Randy. Like, they will both, Randy's obituary, mention Geller. When Geller dies, uh, uh, it will mention Randy. Like, like, they were tied at the hip, and they became far more famous because they were in each other's orbit. Mm -hmm. The fact that there is an article... That purports to explain what that headline promises. That gets to James Randi. How, how many? How many? How many swipes did you have to do from from your point? Because you were already a little bit still down. Haven't it's almost there. still it's haven't al even got it's there. Almost but, 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 it's you know what? I did get to sure. this fact. Uh, did you know that in 1973 he was a guest on the Tonight Show, and for 20 intensely awkward minutes, Mr. Geller didn't even try to bend the objects laid out in front of him. <laughs> The vibe was wrong. Mm, wow. He explained. That's a very wow. interesting. It's a very it's, interesting way to go. Thank about you, that. New York Times. That sounds authentic. It certainly wasn't uh, uh, a thing that we described in episode one yeah. of World's Greatest Astonishingly, Con. Astonishingly, viewers seem to regard the failure as a sign of authenticity. That's actually true. I mean, that's what we talk about yeah. in the show that yeah. it, no. that it, that it did spread. I'm sorry, do you mean World's Greatest Con available on podcasters everywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. World's Greatest Con. Season three. Episode, season, yeah, three. season three. Episode one. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, ours came out after this article or before this article? Oh, months before. Oh, got it. Okay. Months, right. before. Oh, okay. right. months before. Okay. Months before. Months before. How did y'all get that information from them? Uh, well, no, so we didn't get that information. We got that information from a book that James Randi wrote. Oh, the uh, magic called The Magic Geller. of Yuri Geller. Yeah. Uh, where he describes the fact that he was called in by Jay or by uh, uh, Johnny Carson to make sure that Yuri Geller couldn't use the magic preparation methods that he used to do his tricks. Right. And so the reason why Yuri Geller ate a gigantic bag of shit on the Tonight Show and, and that failure were blocked. lives forever, echoing in history, yeah. uh, haunting him so much that he has to get a fucking flack to write a press release in the New York Times to help him cover his shame like uh, a shameful cat after who, just shit on the, who just shit on the rug. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the reason why it happened. But then again, I'm sure maybe this person never read The Magic of Yuri Geller. Uh, uh, could be. Well, I mean, there's a photograph of the author of that book, James Randi, right Randy. here. Yeah, yeah. It says here, uh, these costs, it turned out, were high. So I'm ad advertorializing. Uh, Mr. Geller filed defamation lawsuits against Mr. Randy, including one for claiming that Mr. Geller was performing tricks once taught on the back of cereal boxes. He was. <laughs> <laughs> the so-called cornflakes case ended with a dismissal, but over the years, Mr. Randy burned through $272,000. And also he's dead now. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, uh, uh, Randy wasn't yeah. good with money, so yeah. <laughs> like, he, he burned a lot of money on a lot but, of different things. But, uh, what, a, uh, what, a, what a dunk! Uh, uh, I, will, I, I will say that James Randy only technically did not win one case against Yuri Geller, and that was a case in Japan. And the only reason why he didn't is because he was not able to get to Japan where he would have been required to appear in court mm -hmm. and so it was declared a no contest every other case that yuri geller brought against james randy james randy won outright because these are frivolous cases and yuri geller is a serial lawsuit bringer yeah. i feel like nyt the great lady you know gives equal time here mit the vitriol NYT. is a little hard to fathom it is true that mr geller had a lucrative side hustle in the 1980s 
working for mining companies hmm. who thought his putative psychic powers could help him determine where to dig for in gold? a night. Yes. Mm. Oh. Or oil, or you name it. Yeah. In a 1986 Financial Times story, he said that his standard fee was one million pounds per assignment, three million dollars in a, in inflation adjusted terms, and that eleven companies had retained him. Now, again, the paper of record says here, Mr. Geller's track record as a prospector is not known, and he says he can't remember. Oh, well, that's what are you, you going to do? Then he must have been great. What, what are you going to do? Then he must have been so, great. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, yeah. Would so, you call somebody? So let's say by his own terms, he says that he was retained for a million pounds per project with 11 companies. Yep. So he could, using legitimate psychic powers, hmm. determine the location of whatever these mining companies were looking to mine. Yep. He can't remember his track record. Well, if he is now saying he's a magician and not a genuine psychic, well, then that would either make him a liar or a fraud. <laughs> I mean, you can choose. Those, those are your... You uh, can choose. Those are thoughts either you're having. Either he misrepresented his yeah. ability to find the things that were underground or... He knew he never had he that He knew he never had that. them and he yep. took the money with the full... Understand it. Counselor, he was not that a that was happening. Counselor, yeah. can we stick to the facts? The Allegedly. Facts are, the facts are, per the Respectfully, article... Respectfully, salute. <laughs> Mr. Geller's track record as a prospector is not known, and he says he can't remember, but he oh. never went into faith healing. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. So, so go go back up. Go back up. Oh, because oh, oh. the faith healing thing comes from somewhere in uh, James Randy's thing so when they're talking about the only time that they mention james randy yes uh, uh it says that in james randy's book the psychic healing field soon wh and where was that in addition of what uh oh in the truth about yuri geller oh, the, the book, book that he wrote yeah oh, that only had to get changed to the magic of yuri geller when geller sued uh james randy about it okay, yeah, so no. uh uh so in that oh wait no then that would mean that he was aware of the book Yes. The book in which James Randi tells the famous story. No, 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 but, but you remember he says that he's never been to a magic show. Yeah. No, no, yeah. But, but the, but the, 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 the author, one, the own. author does. So no, no, in, the paragraph. Uh, uh, okay. in that book is where James Randi tells the very famous story. In fact, possibly more famous than both of them. The, the idea of somebody being embarrassed like that, just bare assed. In front of the, front of the world yeah. is probably more famous than both James Randi and Yuri Geller. And it's a reason why we focused on it so much in World's Greatest Con, season three available now. Uh, Whole season streaming. Like, yep. That, the knowledge of the fact that that, that that story was from that book, it's a crazy thing. He didn't mention it when he brought up that rambunctious Yuri Geller being on The Tonight Show and just not feeling the vibes, huh? Uh wow. Hmm. Wow, that's weird. It that is weird. Maybe. I guess it's also hard to read yeah. when you've got your nose up another man's I mean, asshole. I, oh, all right, I guess all it's right, hard like, also to read. Not only yeah. to type, Justin, but to read. Justin, yeah. You're getting fired up. We gotta calm down. We have to stick to the facts. Yeah. He performed live shows and wrote books like, quote, use your psychic powers to have it all. Oh. So watching But he's not a psychic. No. Uh, and now at this point use your maybe the N MIT is editorializing right. here. So watching the Geller haters. Haters. That's a common phrase that yeah. yes. journalists mm -hmm. yeah. So watching mm -hmm. the Geller haters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now is like watching people run into nursery schools shouting that there is no Santa Claus. How how so? Uh, I, because because the Geller haters are saying things like he doesn't have psychic powers, and Geller is so very clearly admitting without admitting 
uh, uh, that he doesn't have psychic powers, that now it's just a bunch of woke scolds uh. that are that are just ruining the fun for everybody else. Because everybody's having so much fun paying him one billion pounds per job to tell him that the mining or oil or ore somewhere isn't where it's supposed to be. They were having so much fun, I mean, and look, now look, these look, scolds... Wait, wait, okay, look, look, look. Uh, these are all just our opinions, but uh, if, if we could stick to the facts as they're presented yeah the new york times famous for their fact checking here um yeah no it goes on he just he reading this to my eyes it looks like a piece of shit yeah long article it's very long the uh, listen to this is 30 minutes like do you the, know how yeah is that at one and a half do text stuff oh mm -hmm. god i have so, i <laughs> But uh, that's long. That's salute, very long. Salute to that guy to being able to jerk him off like that and edge him for 30. Yeah, you got a lot that's, out of it. That's, again, it must be the forearm strength from carrying all that water. Yep. <laughs> well, you know. I, I, I would like to give my Should, editorial review of yeah. this oh, and my yes. opinion. Yeah. I personally believe Brian Brushwood, uh -huh. B -R Brian at Schwood.com, B-R-I-A-N at Schwood.com, I believe that, the, the uh, that we know how to spell this yep. entire article is for the second time the new york times dipping into our awesome podcast you're welcome world's greatest con yeah first they had a headline that said uh, uh, some version of scams don't fool us because we're stupid they fool us because we're human mm -hmm. and right. now this appears to my eyes brian brushwood to be a point by point rebuttal of everything we did in season three of World's Greatest yeah. Con, and I defy specifically anybody. episode one. Specifically episode one, season three. That it, it's not. It's not. We're not asking you to pick up a, a, a big ton of work. Literally, if you want to hear what is absolutely uh, uh, the thing that they are responding to, you don't realize that they're responding to it until you listen to our show. Then go ahead and listen to that. Uh, uh, I would only like to add one thing. Um, they make a big deal of impugning James Randi by saying, by pulling one fucking random line from his book about Yuri Geller, which was published decades ago, that he did not go into faith healing. Because he did not become a prosperity gospel like yeah. preacher. He was not the right? next Eli Gemstone. He was not. He was not. Now, him being Jewish would probably factor into that. Uh, I, I don't know how many mega synagogues uh, uh, there are. That, I mean, that seems to be a Christian thing. That okay. seems to be a, 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 a Christian thing. But I will say that right now, you at home can go to Yuri Geller's website. And you can buy a teddy bear, a Geller bear, that is said in the text of that product is infused with the psychic power of Yuri Geller. All right, uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, uh, we're about to offer a product on scamstuff.com, a store that literally has the word scam in it. We are literally about to offer a product that is infused with asteroids, meteorites, but we're buying the meteorites and we're shaving them into the ingots that are mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Asteroids, uh, meteorites, as best I understand, are actual objects, and it's neat to have space stuff in your puzzle box. Uh, are you saying it's kind of the same thing? Well, you know, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Apparently, Yuri Geller is underwater with a vanity museum that he's put together in Israel. So salute to you and uh, all of your business health there, Yuri. But uh, I don't know if he has put his actual psychic powers into these bears. I mean... He's now saying audit. that you're that, saying audit that that actual psychic power is the equivalent of mean old scolds like us saying is the equivalent of Santa Claus. So I don't know if fleecing parents who want to give their children psychic powers that they believe in because you've built a decades long reputation for having genuine psychic powers. But that, to me, is your would opinion. feel like faith healing yeah. if he were to do it. Because your faith. You would have faith in yeah. something. You would hope that it would heal something as precious to you as a child. And that's the reason why you'd give him money. But the good news is, is that the New York Times said 
that he's never gone into faith healing. Uh, hey, that's neither here nor there, but I do make the following challenge. If anybody would like to settle in their own hearts the two superpositions of this debate, I might suggest that you listen first to World's Greatest Con, season three, mm -hmm. then read whatever words are in this article from the New York Times, mm -hmm. and then write me with your opinion directly at brian at schwood.com. There we yep. go. Yeah, no, the article in the New York Times is called, I looked Yuri Geller's taint, and here are my 10 favorite flavor notes. <laughs> Or the end of magic, or the magic, yes. world. the end of the tobacco, magic cranberry, <laughs> sandalwood. Of, oh my god! And just the hint of ass. <laughs> <laughs> can we get Can we get Geller on Great Night? What's he no? He's about? already here. Yeah, he's here he with us. He's here spiritually. He is here with us psychically. Uh, okay, listen. Oh, I'm, just, I'm slightly off screen, but what I need for you to do is. Just say one word with me. Say, I'm right. Geller's right. Come on. If you all say it, it'll be great. I'm right. Everybody. One, two, three. Geller's right. <laughs> no? No. No. Yeah. Well, Wrong audience, bro. Yeah, apparently maybe it does have magic. Because I wasn't <laughs> able to pull that shit off. No, you no, weren't. I couldn't you make weren't. that happen. You weren't. Uh, no, uh, the, articles, uh, the article sucks shit. Uh, 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 thanks uh, for it, listening. Thanks for the download, though. For real, thank you for the download. We hope we get many, many more. I'll say you're welcome for the headline that uh, somebody who's a very big fan of World's Greatest Con decided to uh, we be can't, inspired by. I don't think we can say who, but we once got advice to sell our podcast to the New York Times from somebody that had a, a, a great deal of uh, clout in our industry that I do respect Somebody uh, who had actually sold a podcast. Somebody that York sold Times. a podcast to the yep. New York Times. We were asking for advice, and we said, what do we do with this podcast? And somebody who had sold a podcast to the New York Times said, my advice is you sell should it sell your podcast to, to the, the New, New York, York Times. Times. Uh, Shortly what, what, after what, what, that, what I What I didn't know is that was the equivalent of somebody saying, nice bridge. It'd be a shame if it burned down. <laughs> So anyway, uh, a, a, a completely original headline, cons don't fool us <laughs> because we're stupid. They fool us because we're human. Yeah. Showed up. And now this appears to be, a, to my eyes, in my opinion, mm -hmm. appears to be a note-for-note -note rebuttal of season three. Episode of one. World's Greatest Con. Go listen to it. Go listen to it. You tell me. You tell me. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else I'm going to say? I feel like I've already done enough yeah. jokes about let, 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 gay let's sex. Let's play a fun game that I'm calling uh, Name People We Know Who Have Sold Podcasts to the New York Times. <laughs> no, we won't. We, no, we won't? Do that. Oh, no. Okay. Because no. right. well, you don't want to burn where that connection came from. Okay. All right. Well, who knows? Uh, but I do encourage everybody to listen to our show. And also, and also and I, don't, I, I, I don't want the shrapnel to hit that person. <laughs> okay. I want the shrapnel right, 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 to be right, right. very, very specific. <laughs> Uh, Bryce, are we done? Yeah, you, you, the, yeah, yeah. Thank you, hey. Greener. <laughs> that's that's the way you respond when the answer is not just yes, you're done, but we're talking about your career. <laughs> All right, thank you, Green Room. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here. We still got a little bit more Green Room, Great Room holding thing coming up for you, Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh. Oh, we do have a little bit of picnic. It'll be back. It's back. Hello, everybody. So we've got, uh, it's a Tuesday. We've got uh, a good show coming up for you. A lot of topics, some videos. Hey, that motherfucker. Oh, I'm going to turn that off because I forgot I also had that on. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, in any case, thank you uh, so much for joining us and welcome back. Uh, uh, it's Tuesday. Big news. Big news in the F1 world today. Uh, 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 it came out that uh, the, the long rumored uh, uh, beheading of Nick DeVries uh, turns out uh, uh, has happened. It's happened. Rest in peace to Nick. Uh, I spent. I came up with a mnemonic to remember how to spell Nick DeVries' name, and now I don't need to remember it. But I will tell you it now because I no longer need this information because the MFR just got dumped from his contract like 10 races in. So, okay, it's Nick DeVries... Hype the fries because it's it's Nick but with a Y like hype, and then DeVries V R I E S like fries, and now 
I don't need to know that information. None of you needed to know that, that information. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, one Daniel Ricardo is going to replace him at uh, third driver uh, for Red Bull. Uh and that's a uh, that's a tough one. He must have known. He must. I mean, obviously, it's <laughs> we've been talking about it. Like he and Sergio both know that they are in very hot water. They are having a lot of driver errors, um, and it doesn't help that the AlphaTauri car is also probably just not any good either. Um. So he probably knew that there was some amount of like, hey, come on, hey, um. Elconder Pasta says, what did DeVries do? Well, the thing is, he wasn't very good. <laughs> he would just, uh, his teammate would, it, it was uh, Yuki Tsunoda, uh, uh, was, was outperforming him. I think Yuki got, uh, let's see, I want to say two points uh, in, in the standings so far this season where uh, uh, Nick has uh, earned uh, not any points, I believe. Let me just double check here. Yes, Nick DeVries is still tied for zero points. And in fact, I think I think he loses the tie because Logan Sargent has a better non-points finishing result than 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 uh, Nick does. But Yuki's only got two points, so it's it, we're not we're not talking about a big gap here, but um honestly, this is this is still uh the team formerly Toro Rosso. This is Red Bull's junior team. Oh, almost got him. There were three of them. There were like three of them all here at once. Uh and so if they're supposed to be the junior team, like, hey, you got to do something with the, oh, I don't know, strongest car on the grid. That's certainly the the, the problem Perez is in. Uh, he's got what is demonstrably the fastest car uh, uh, ever. No, but uh, uh, very fast right now. Uh, and uh, if you can't perform, well, uh, then what are you doing here? You're, you're expensive. He's expensive, you know? That's, that's my opinion. I think maybe Nick DeVries is probably expensive, given he earned zero points. I'm going to say yeah. I'm going to say that. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, the next race is in Hungary in uh, a week and a half. It'll be fun. Y'all hungry for Hungary? <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, uh, But, yeah, that'll be fun. We'll got, we've got... Daniel, uh, Daniel Ricardo just taken over. Like he's gonna, there's not gonna be like a goodbye, Nick. It's just uh, get him, get the fuck out of here. Fit, fit Daniel into that, into that uh, car. And so we, it seems like we'll actually get to see if that car is bad or not. Because it could be that the car is just bad. Um, uh, because we know Daniel should be good, and Daniel, well, I don't know, he should be good, but then he never, he had some trouble with land, with keeping up with Lando, so. All right. Uh, oh, we just need a few more minutes here as everyone gets makes their way inside. Uh, Justin. Yeah, Bryce. What's what's popping, fam? How do you feel about the unceremonious firing of Nick DeVries? Uh, hey, they they really just dropped his ass. How do you think I feel? Betrayed, bewildered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I don't know. Is he? Did he found the? De- DeVries Institute. <laughs> That's good. They're serious. He's serious about success. He is. <laughs> what was that? Was that a scam or was that a real place, DeVry? I think it was real, but it was just an expensive trade school, I think, right? Basically. Yeah. Basically. Auto repair and, and uh, I know they were doing I, IT. So it was a there. place for which you could like benefit your life. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it and it's still around. Uh, uh, apparently. Really? Apparently. I guess it, I guess it's just cable ads that aren't around anymore. Because that's yeah. really it was a bunch of people that were like, it was- I I mm-hmm. I was sitting on my couch just like you, watching a rerun of Saturday Night Live on Comedy Central. Yeah. And then I learned how to, but it was always like high tech early from the time like high tech shit. It was like so- a sparking uh, a circuit board or something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah, ITT Tech might be what you're thinking of. Uh, oh, what was DeVry? Uh, DeVry? Was DeVry cars? No, I think DeVry was just uh, 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 technology, healthcare, business, accounting. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know. A for-profit technical school. Yeah. But uh, uh, apparently ITT Tech uh, survived to 2016. Way longer than I thought. Damn, Trump killed it. 
That's that's right. Rested. What did ITT Tech know? They had a they had a truth that no one wanted to know. They they were basically University of Phoenix before University of Phoenix, right? Question mark. Yeah. I but I think they did actually have schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there's a there's a faint, there's a great uh, a pretty good video. It's called the series is called Pretty Good about uh, <laughs> this college basketball game that went like zero to 260 something and it was between a DeVry and ITT tech team uh I uh oh that's a great question I don't remember you'll have to google pretty good serious about success drop it in the middle of the show yeah uh, <laughs> I typed in pretty good serious about success into google and it just gave me inspirational quotes I think this is really going to screw up my ads for the next few months <laughs> All right, well, let's screw up your ads for the next few months here with the great Uh Let's get our final roll call here. Justin, you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan. Woo-hoo. Annalisa. I'm great. Kinnon. Great. Brett. Hello, Ooh. friend. Uh, uh, Troy State v. DeVry. Thank you very much. That's what I was looking for. Troy State, and it was Troy State who won by a lot, by quite a lot. Uh, uh, Brett, you're good? Yes? I am good. Good. Uh, all right. Our studio audience in the yeah. chat room! Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us here in the pre-show green room, great room, whole dang thing. Uh, of course, patreon.com slash great night is where you can go to support us. Uh, go support us here because I need a new battery for this remote and I can't turn the light on. Sorry, everybody. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's fun. Uh, you guys want to do... Hey, Brett, you ready to do a show? Let's do it. All right, then... In, in, three, 